Oh, yeah. You guys ready to worship the Lord today? Yes. Come on, let's stand on our feet and let's begin to clap our hands. Come on. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, Let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the mouth. I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm number. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water my enemies drowned in. Yes. Come on. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise when I feel it. Praise when I don't. I praise cause I know you're still in control. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. Come on, lift it up. As long as I'm breathing. I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't, oh I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, Oh, yes. Hallelujah. oh, you're ready to praise Jesus. He's alive. He's alive forever. You are worthy, God. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you oh, I praise cause you're sovereign Praise cause you reign Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave I praise cause you're faithful Praise cause you're true Praise cause there's nobody greater than you oh, Praise the Lord, oh my soul That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on and shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, we give you praise, oh God. You're so good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing the night alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my tune Till I met you in a heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the end that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open you call my name Hallelujah. Well, welcome today. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Happy Easter. You made it. Through the rain, through the snow. Well, I don't know. We're a little south for snow. But man, you know, they got like a foot of snow up there. Hallelujah. That we made it and we didn't have to go through that. Amen. I said, you know, this is what happens when you have Easter in March. You never know what's going to happen. Could be cold, could be hot, could be snow. You never know. Man, we're so glad you're here today. 
if you're joining us for the first time, there is a connection card that's on the back of your seat. If you don't have, if you don't have one, um, look at someone with a really strong look on your face and say, give it to me now. If, you, they, if they have one, no, just be nice, be nice. And just fill that out, and at the end of the service, you can uh, give it to the connection table that's on your way out. And, uh, but before you go out, you have to take a selfie at this beautiful display that's over here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Make sure you do that before you leave today. But, man, we're so glad to be here today. I woke up this morning, and I said it again. Jesus is alive. And if there's a tomorrow when we wake up in the morning, we can say, Jesus is alive. Why? Because he's alive forever. Hallelujah. And here's the cool thing. Because Jesus is alive, you and I have a decision that we can make, and we can be alive with him. Amen? forevermore. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. What an awesome privilege we have today to come and just worship him on his day. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Yes. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today. You're so good. You've been so kind to us. You're so lovely. Yeah. Uh, one guy telling another guy you're lovely because you are. Yes. We look upon you. We see nothing but beauty. Yes. We see nothing but kindness. We see nothing but grace and mercy. All oh, these wonderful things. These are who you are. You are the righteous one who came down from heaven, who gave his life for all, but was raised to life on the third day. And that's why we're here today. In fact, that's why we're here every single week, because we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today, because he's in our hearts. Lord, we thank you. That your spirit is here right now. Just Holy Spirit, just begin to move. Begin to move in this place right now. Come on, even right now, the Lord is, is, is going to move here this morning on this Easter Sunday. Just tell the Lord in your own words, Lord, I am ready to receive all that you have for me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to turn around and greet about 15 or 20 people, and then we're going to move forward in the worship today. Come on. I'm serious.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will Give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord right now. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace today, Lord. You're so good. You're so good, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. song of ages to the land and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all And your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy for. in freedom and if you bear his name sing the song forever to the land we'll sing the song forever Christ, holy, 
angels cry. Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Come on, hear your people, come on. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. Holy, holy forever. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. He's Jesus is here right now. He's here. We've come into this place, lifted up his name. And he says, wherever his name is lifted up, he says, I inhabit the praise of my people. So we're here right now in the beauty of holiness. Could you reach to your neighbor on your left and on your right? Let's just begin to turn this place into a prayer time. If you know them by name, call them by name. Let's just begin to pray for them right now. That God would touch their lives. Lord, we pray for that person that's on our left right now. Father, we pray that you touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, that you would minister to them like only you can do, oh God. By your Holy Spirit from the inside out, bring healing. Bring wholeness. Bring the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. Do it right now, we ask you, God. You provided for healing through your sacrifice, through the stripes upon your back. We receive it today. We receive it today. We say manifest your healing right now. Lord, and the person that's on our right, Lord, we thank you for them. Thank you for calling them into the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you for bringing them into this place today, Lord. Minister to them, Lord. Speak to their hearts. Speak to their lives, Lord, that they would be different than when they came in this morning. Lord, touch them in their spirit, their soul, and their body today. Bless them like only you can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll, let's watch this video. He is the Word of God. A prophet. A prophet. A servant. He is the bread of bread of life. The shepherd and the and the lamb. He is the he is messenger. He is the he is humble, the humble king. king. He is, he is the son, the of, son God. of God. He was rejected, he was rejected and abandoned. abandoned. He was betrayed, he was betrayed and dead. He was mocked, mocked beat, 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 bruised, bruised and pierced. pierced. He was crucified, he was crucified and buried. buried. But the nails, the nails could, not, could hold. not hold. The cross, the cross could not could finish, not finish him. him. The stone, the stone could, not could not keep him. Keep him. Death, death could not could not feed him. him. He, he is, is our is ransom, ransom and our and redeemer. redeemer. He is our he deliverer, is our deliverer and, our and our refuge. He is he mighty, is mighty. He is glorious. He is, he is holy, holy, and exalted. Exalt. He, he is our Savior, and he, he is his risen. risen. Hallelujah! We give you praise today, Lord. they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us 
the weight of every curse upon him. One final breath he gave, his heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away, his perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? A resurrected king has rendered you defeated. Forever he is gone.
lift your hands to the Lord. He's so worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Shout to the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh, we give you praise, oh God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. I give you praise, oh God. Oh, we thank you for your presence in this place right now. Jesus, you said you would always be with us. We know your presence is always with us. We're not always mindful. But Lord, there's something about when we come together and worship together as saints. There's nothing like it in the world. Being in your presence and worshiping and lifting up your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning. God is so good. Praise God. It is so good to be able to celebrate on this Resurrection Sunday together. It is an amazing celebration. We are celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the defeat of death. We will not be dead forever. We will be alive forever with him. And that is something that gives us hope and strength and joy that the world can't give and the world can't take away. Once we accept Jesus as our savior, we believe that he died and he rose again. And he did that for our sins, for our imperfections, for our failures, because sin entered the world when Adam and Eve were here. And there's nothing that can stop that, but we can be redeemed from it. Amen. So we live in hard times, and it's true, it's hard. But with Jesus, it's a little sweeter, and it's a little easier, and it's a little more hope-filled. And we have the hope of a future of eternity with him in perfection, and our perfected, glorified bodies, and our perfect, glorified state of being where everything is beautiful and amazing. Don't you long for the day that we can be together for all eternity in heaven with him? where we'll sing holy, holy, holy for all eternity because we'll continually see new aspects of him, new facets of him, things that are more amazing. You ever met somebody and the more you talk to them, the more you are amazed by them? Have you ever had the privilege of meeting someone like that where you're like, oh, and you do that? Oh, and you do that? Oh, and you do it well? <laughs> and you're just more and more amazed? Well, that's like God is, but to the nth degree, like we can't even fathom. I can't, we can't comprehend. We can't quite fully understand, but yet we have faith and we have trust that he is who he says he is and he will be who he says he will be. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus was our example in every sense of the word. He was our example in every sense of the word that he, he came to earth and he lived this life just like we have to live. And you know, he went to the cross and he partially understood the assignment, but you know, he had to have faith and trust in God that he would be resurrected again because he couldn't fully see it. He was, it, it, this is one of those, another one of those things that kind of bakes our minds because he was fully God and he was fully man. That's very hard to comprehend. So he didn't know everything in his man state, but he knew scripture and he knew his God, he knew his father, and he was in communion with him, and he spoke with him, he was in a relationship with him, and he knew him so well in his earthly human state 
that he trusted that what he said he was gonna do, he was gonna do. So when he said, son, you've gotta go, you've gotta be the pure sacrifice for people so that we can be reunited with them for all eternity and you will be alive again. He had to trust that that was true because I'm sure he didn't fully understand how can I be dead and then alive without anybody else doing it for me here on earth. How does that happen? But it did. And we believe it's true. We believe that God's word is true. And that's what brings us together in unity today, that we believe that he is true. He is who he says he is. And it's reason to celebrate. And it's reason to tell everybody. It's one of those things we shouldn't be able to hold inside. We gotta tell everybody we run into. God is good. God is good and he is for us. Let me tell you about my king. He's amazing. He brought me hope. He got me out of the miry pit when I couldn't get myself out. There was no escape, but he came and he got me out of my deep, dark depression. Whatever it is, once you experience that, you can't hold it in. You've got to tell, you've got to share. And that's how the good news is perpetuated throughout all the earth is we share it. We share the love with others and we radiate, we reflect his light, his purity. We reflect it, which should be coming off of our faces and out of our pores. His love and his light and his hope should be emanating from our bodies and people should be attracted to it. And so when they see you walking around the stores and they say, you have a great smile. Let me tell you why I have a great smile. I got somebody trying to get me to do a sales job one time. You have a great smile. I said, well, let me tell you why. (laughs) Let me tell you why. Be ready. Be ready with the answer. Be ready with the answer of why I have a great smile. Why do I have a big smile? Let me tell you why. Because I'm not just some little girl that got everything she ever wanted all of her life. Because God had to meet me through some troubles. God had to meet me some, through some dark, lonely times. Don't judge a book by a cover. Just because somebody looks like they have it all together doesn't mean they did their whole entire lives. I have it together today because God is my savior. I have boldness and courage and strength because God is my savior. I'm not depressed, I'm not sad. I don't have those issues because I'm full of the Holy Spirit who gives me strength and peace. We all go through hard times. Everybody goes through hard times. Some of you are going through hard times right now. You don't have to stay in the hard times. You may be in the valley, but God will be with you in the valley. He'll be you on the way up to the mountaintop. And he'll be there to celebrate with you at that mountaintop and hold you. And that's okay if you go down to the valley again, because he'll go with you. He'll help you through. He didn't say we wouldn't have hard times. He said he would never leave us alone during those hard times. So don't believe the lie, you're alone. You're not alone. You're never alone. God is always with you. Amen. Amen, I'm not preaching today, okay. So, but what I am here to do is I do wanna invite you, we're gonna have a women's event on April 27th. It's gonna be awesome. We've already got some great planning going on. We already have a bunch of supplies purchased. All we need is you to be there. So we want you to sign up. There's gonna be a sign up here. It should be live this week. I don't think it's live today yet. But April 27th, it's gonna be at 10 a.m. It's gonna be a brunch. I'm bringing in one of our pastors from California. Pastor Kinu from Antioch is gonna be with us. It's gonna be amazing. So I want you to plan to come to that. Invite moms, friends, sisters. It's not just for moms. It's for women. Okay, it's a women's event, and we're going to encounter God in that women's event because I don't, I don't believe in having women's events and crying and complaining. I don't do that. What I do is I encounter God, and I expect transformation every time we come together. Amen? Amen. And so we want you to come back for that. Also, the weekend before that, April 21st, that weekend, that Sunday, we're going to have a morning and an evening service with Pastor DeWitt and Kim Jones. They are a couple that is based out of Dallas and they are powerful and prophetic and they are anointed in ministry and music. Um, they have won several uh, awards, Grammy, Dove. I don't know. They've won a bunch of awards. They're amazing. Um, they're our friends. They're they are our friends and they are amazing people and you don't want to miss them. Uh, the weekend of April 21st, we're going to do morning and evening. If you, Who wants more of God? Who wants more power? then you want to be here that weekend. Don't miss it. We invite you to come back. Amen. Amen. You got your own mic? Hallelujah. And all the men are going to get together and eat some steak. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're, we are going to eat. We, we are going to do that. Yes. But not, well, we could do it when you guys are here. We'll just go eat steak. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Brother Izzy, he likes to make those steaks. Amen. And uh, so that's his gift. And that's a good gift. I like to partake of that gift. Amen. How many are glad that Jesus is alive? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings today as I scoot this over here. Receive tithes and offerings now. I want to. I want you to look at Romans chapter six, verse four. <clears throat> Today is the day that we celebrate new life. Amen. Yes. New life that came out of that tomb two thousand years ago. Jesus went in dead. And uh, I almost. I had an idea. I was going to do this yesterday, but I got busy and didn't do it. I was just going to post a, on social media. I was just going to post a just a black screen, and I was going to put. This is what it looked like inside the tomb 2,000 years ago. Pure darkness. <laughs> Jesus was dead. Dead as a doornail. I don't know. I've heard that my whole life. I didn't quite understand it. But I guess it means really dead. You know, Monty Python, they had a skit in it about the parrot, you know, as it's mostly dead. Oh, no, that was, uh, that was uh, uh, Princess Bride. Yeah. yeah, just mostly dead, mostly dead. No, Jesus was all the way dead. There was no faking. There was no swooning. There's actually people, uh, very, very, very. Uh, they th they think very intelligent, and they try to explain. Uh, actually, you know that the conversation's going really bad when someone acts or someone says that. Actually, look at your neighbor and say, actually, <laughs> Jesus was on that cross. He, they beat him, you know, to the you know an inch of his life, and he's bleeding to death. Right there, just before they got him to the cross, they nailed him on there for hours. And they said, well, Jesus didn't die. He swooned. Come on, are you serious? You're not going to make it. Most men didn't make it to the cross when they got beat like Jesus got, was beaten. So when he went in there dead, he was, I mean, he was dead. Put him in a tomb. He came out three days later. But today, as we celebrate new life, we, you know, you need to understand, we celebrate this every day. Yeah. Don't you love it? When, 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 you're a, when you follow Jesus, you don't celebrate Thanksgiving once a year. You have Thanksgiving every day. You don't celebrate Christmas just once a year. You celebrate it every day. Yeah. See, when, when, you, when you start to walk with Jesus and walk in his favor and his will and his plan, you get to have a holiday every day. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Every day is a holy day. Come on, somebody. Yes. But no matter where you've been or what you've done, Romans 6, 4, I have this in the NIV, is for you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Amen. Amen. And that's for us today as we come and we give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. We can celebrate our new life. Amen. Amen. We celebrate. Some of you have had a new life for a long time. But guess what? It's new every single morning. Amen. It, this, this new life never gets old. Amen. If it gets old, we're doing something wrong. Because every day with Jesus is, should be better than the day before. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Life can be crazy sometimes, but to know that Jesus loves you and he's walking with you no matter what you're going through, it's amazing. Every day I could go to, I could go to bed at night, have a horrible day, wake up the next morning and I could say, it's a new day. It's a new, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, and I'm living and I'm feeling fine. Oh, is that a song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mike Buble, Frank Sinatra, somebody like that, right? But it, it, we can have that new life every day, amen? And when we have a new life, we have a giving that flows out of that. It's not something that somebody has to demand of us. We want to give, amen? And I thank the Lord that you guys are givers because you love Jesus, amen? When you love Jesus, you love everybody, amen? So let's give to the Lord today. We, got, we had several ways. Did you have it up there? Yeah, you got all the ways to give. This morning, you can give online. That makes it really easy. And you can do what Dave Ramsey calls 
automatic uh, discipline where you can put it in there and it automatically comes out every, every time you want it to. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's give, so let's give to the Lord. Let's stand this morning as we give. And uh, man, it's so good. If you give online, just tap the bucket as it goes by. Amen. And uh, we, we, we forgot a video for right now. So let's, let's uh, just, just begin to give and pass it around. And you guys, you just look up here at me. And uh, I don't know, anybody got any requests uh, this, this morning on Easter Sunday? <laughs> we are so thankful that you guys are here today. It's so much better when you're here. Amen. Because I got here earlier, and it was nobody here, and it was boring. And uh, there were things on the floor that we know not of. Because this is a grade school cafeteria, if you didn't notice. <laughs> But we have cleansed it from all unrighteousness. Well, most of. And uh, we're ready to have church this morning. Are you ready to have church today? Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for those who give. Thank you for those who are in covenant with you. Your word says that you will, if we're in covenant with you through our giving, that you would rebuke the devourer in our lives. Lord, that you would take, uh, sometimes it just seems like we have a hole in the wallet or in the purse. But Lord, you can come through and just seal that up so it doesn't, we don't lose it. You can give us a, a, a wisdom and, and knowledge to know how to handle our money, how to use our money wisely. And you can show us how to multiply it and grow it because of your wisdom that you give to us. Lord, do that right now. Let that anointing that's at Kings, let that corporate anointing of blessing and prosperity fall upon each one in Jesus' name. If you, re if you believe that and you receive that, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated, but you got to tell somebody, Happy Easter, before you sit down. Oh, yeah. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I think that uh, by the sound of the coyotes outside my house last night, they might have got the Easter bunny. Oh, Jesus. This morning, I wanted you to know this morning that this church is a part of a church that's worldwide. It's a global church. It's called King's Cathedral and Chapels. We are King's Chapel Phoenix. We just say King's Phoenix, but it's King's Chapel Phoenix. Uh, we also meet every Sunday night in Rainbow Valley, so we have a King's Rainbow Valley we got some Rainbow Valley people here ooh, ooh. today. God bless you. But we also have, and, and uh, the number has been growing so much. I, have, I don't even know what the number is right now. It's just north of 650 something. That 650 churches that have come out of one church in Kahului, Maui, Hawaii. And uh, under, under the leadership of Dr. James Morocco, a mighty man of God full of Holy Spirit and wisdom, amen? He is like an apostle. He, he, he wouldn't want to be called that. But people from all over the world who know, these, who know what the Bible says about apostles, they call him apostle. But he doesn't, you know, have his, it doesn't say that on his card, apostle. But he is. Apostle is one who's sent by God, one who's had a divine revelation of Jesus, and one who starts churches, plants churches. So back in 1980, I believe, when, these, when he took over the church in Maui, they went from about 30 people to over 1,000 in 12 months. Hallelujah. His own superintendent told him not to go to Maui. He said it's a graveyard for pastors. That means when the pastors went there, they either died or they killed the church or both. And, but the Holy Spirit told Dr. Morocco to go there. He went there. He obeyed. And he immediately started to see uh, the growth that happens, like in the book of Acts. They went from addition to multiplication. Some of us do that quicker than others. Amen? And uh, some churches can go for 10 years or 15 years before they see an explosion of growth. And that's okay. As long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, that's what we're trying to do. So we're, uh, we're uh, following the, the, the footsteps of our leader who quickly started planting churches there on the island, and I thought, coming from Illinois, 
You know, I used to drive 35 miles to church every day. Autumn lived in Missouri. She drove 35 miles plus to church. I thought, why in the world would you need to have another church on Maui when you got one big one right there? Can't you just drive? No, because there's people that live in West Maui that didn't go to the middle of Maui. They, they just stayed on their side of the, of the island. So they just started to plant churches where people were. Amen? Amen. And, and from there, it's just like you saw in the book of Acts, from, from, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the outermost, uttermost parts of the world. That's how this gospel, had, that's how it got to Arizona. That's how it got to you. Amen? But we saw that in Maui. It went, it went from Maui to Oahu to all the islands around. Next thing you know, we're over in Japan. We're over in Indonesia and Cambodia and Vietnam and the Philippines, growing like crazy in the Philippines. And, and we even have churches in Alaska. There's some crazy Hawaiian people who moved to Alaska. And we got some crazy Hawaiian people that moved to Arizona. That's even more crazy. In Hebrew, it's Mashuga or Yiddish. Crazy. People are crazy. Yes. You're going to go where God wants you to go. Amen. And uh, so we're here under that vision. We, we always place this up here. We, we're, we're believing for the 12 120 vision, 1,200 congregations and 120,000 disciples by the end of 2025. We already had 2020, so we couldn't put another 20 on there. So, and we didn't want to wait till 2030. So we're going to do it. Amen? Amen. And all of us here have a part in it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You're like, you can be in, a, you can be in Arizona, in Alaska, in Indonesia, wherever, and be a part of this vision. And, you know, we're just one of the church, many churches that, are, that have a vision like this. We want to see the Great Commission happen all over the world. That means what Jesus said. Go into all the world and make disciples. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Make disciples. Not, he didn't say plant churches. Amen? We put the cart before the horse. We, we make disciples, then we have a church. Yeah. Amen? That's how we do it. That's how we do it. But I want you to turn in. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 8. Every year, Dr. Morocco gives the state of the church address. Kind of like the, the president of the United States gives that uh, address. And it's very similar, except um, people don't interrupt him by standing up and clapping and all that stuff like they do with the president. It's so annoying to watch that. But, but we have that with our global senior pastor. And he has a word and um, the word that he gave us this year was breakout. That God was going to break out in our lives this year, in, in this season. It's not even just a, a calendar year, but in this season of time, God is wanting in the church to break out. Amen? That, that means so many different things. We'll talk about it. There's, and it's, there's so many places in the scripture we could go with this. But I thought, I waited till, till Easter because he gave this in, in January. I thought, man, Easter would be great because the, the greatest breakout of all time was when Jesus broke out of that tomb. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And uh, he didn't do it by himself. <clears throat> he had the power of the Holy Spirit moving in his life. So I'm thinking, because the book of Romans tells us, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would dwell in us, it will quicken our mortal bodies. I'm thinking, if Jesus, the Son of God, Son of Man, if he needed Holy Spirit, I need Holy Spirit. Because in fact, he didn't just need him. He needed him when he was walking the earth. It said that he walked full of the Spirit. Even as a man, he had to have the power of the Spirit. Jesus is like a prototype for humans. God, when God said, I made, he made Adam, that didn't work out too well. Then he made, some people say second Adam, but I like to say last Adam. He's the last one. There's not going to be another Adam. So we look at Jesus and he is a perfect example for how we are to live our lives. Amen? Full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was so full of the Holy Spirit that even when he was dead, Holy Spirit came back, got back in his body, and they walked out of the tomb. Amen? Let's, let's read this, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 
brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. But some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all of the disciples. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as one born out of due time. Now this is the apostle Paul. He persecuted Christians. After Jesus was dead and buried and then rose from the dead, the disciples, his disciples began going around the world. And the Bible says it turned, them, turned the, the world upside down. <clears throat> Just 12 men. Amen. They went about and they caused all kinds of trouble, especially with the religious people. Because they would heal people in the name of Jesus and they would be healed. And the religious people didn't like that. Because they didn't understand. They were blind to really what was happening. Or, or, they, or, or they didn't want to see it because they had, a, they had their own gig going. And you don't mess with people when they got their own thing going. Amen. But Jesus comes in and disrupts that. And, and when he does that, the religious leader sent this man named Paul to imprison and to kill Christians, followers of Jesus. I'll put it in today's terms. To a Christian, the Apostle Paul was a terrorist. He terrorized the church. He murdered women and children. Amen? But he says in this verse, then last of all, he also was seen by me also. We know by the book of Acts that Paul had an personal encounter with the risen Jesus. Amen? who was so amazing and awesome, it blinded him. He couldn't see. In fact, he couldn't see until he got to uh, the guy in town named Ananias to pray for him, and then the Bible says, and scales fell off of his eyes. I believe that was a, a symbol of how we're, we can be totally blinded, but Jesus is the one that ultimately has to come and reveal and remove all the stuff that we've built up in our own lives. For him, it was religion. His religion was blinding him. Religion will kill more people on this planet than anything. Amen? That's, you know, we call those holy wars. People say that, that God told them to do it, and it's not true. Amen? Amen. But, um, but I, I saw this verse. I thought, how amazing for what we're talking about today, break out. Because that was a great breakout, too, that, yes. that God broke through the, the most the most evil, as far, as far as a believer was in that day, the most hated, or not, not hated, but feared person on the planet was, his name was Saul. The Hebrews called him Saul, the Greeks called him, and the Romans called him Paul. But to know Saul of Tarsus was coming, you're in deep trouble. And to see him write most of the New Testament, that's amazing. Hallelujah. You know what that says to me? If God can use a terrorist, he can use us. He can use me. Amen? Amen. I'm not, preach, I'm not preaching today, but God used a, a donkey once. <laughs> if he can use a donkey, he can use me. Look at your neighbor and say, if he can use a donkey, he can use you. I know, he can use you. <laughs> but this theme breakout is woven throughout Scripture and, and depicted in moments when God's power just dramatically changes the circumstances, leading his people into just new levels of freedom, understanding, and new levels of victory. And here are several references that encapsulate the idea of what I would call divine breakout. Amen. Now, when I was a teenager, I had a breakout, but that was a different thing. Okay, number one. Number one, breaking out of limitations. Limitations. There's this great scripture, a great prayer in the Bible. We've, we've taught this. We pray it, I almost pray it every day, found in 1 Chronicles 4.10, Jabez, let's, let's read that, Jabez cried out to the, to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, let your hand be with me, and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Another version says, and to keep me from hurting others, which is what we pray, Lord, keep me from pain, but keep me from hurting others, bringing pain to others. And it says, God granted his request, Hallelujah. I like to see prayers answered. And Jesus, the, the Father, answered his prayer. Jabez calls out to God to bless him, enlarge his territory, keep him from evil, let his hand be upon him. And, and, and God grants his request, symbolizing 
a significant breakout from his previously defined boundaries and limitations because the world that he grew up in, I don't, we don't have time to talk, go into all of it, but he had, he had been given uh, a rough way. But God heard his prayer, just like Jabez. We can boldly ask God to expand our territories, not just in physical terms, but in influence. Amen? Amen. Somebody say influence. influence. And for opportunities and for spiritual growth. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's not be confined by our past or our current limitations that we have and all of us have, but we can do this. And I love when we were setting up today, uh, Steve was joke, wasn't joking. He's like, man, I believe God's going to do this. And then he, he basically said these words, pray big, expect big. Amen. Amen. That when we allow God to break out in our, in our limitations, we can pray big and expect big. Amen. Because he's breaking us out. Somebody say break out. Break out. Two, breaking out of captivity. Now, this is real easy. We can go to Israel's exodus from Egypt. We could find that in Exodus 14, 21, 22. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land. Come on. And the waters were divided. <clears throat> so the children of Israel went to the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Whoa, this is amazing. This is way cooler than Charlton Heston's version. How many have been to, how many, uh, I went to, uh, when I was a kid, my mom took me to Universal Studios. Now, I lived in, in Illinois, but my mom did in Southern California. So when I found out, we're going to go see where Moses was. I knew it was there. I mean, they've got all kinds of new stuff now. But back in the day, they didn't have, they, they had like King Kong and they had Jaws and some of that. But, what, but my biggest thing I wanted to see was I wanted to go through where they parted the water. You guys been there? They drive the little tram through there. Now it's just like nothing. It's just like, like a water thing. Like, oh, that's, that's cool. But like to me as a kid, like, I wanted to see that because I read it and I saw the movie. Yeah, Ten Commandments. How many watch that? It's like 80 hours long. It's a great movie though. Um, through Moses, God parts the Red Sea, allowing the Israelites to escape captivity. This miraculous event marks a pivotal breakout from bondage to freedom. Amen? Amen? So maybe today, maybe today you're facing a Red Sea moment in life. In, this, in that time, they're, they're at, at two to three million Jews were, had left Egypt, made their way down, and uh, they're pretty sure they know the path nowadays, but they made their way down there, and they went down through like a giant wash, and so they get to the end of that wash, and that's the Red Sea. So this is how it was. They couldn't go left. They couldn't go north. They couldn't go south. And the sea was in front of them, and they already knew Pharaoh was behind them with all his chariots and his horsemen. Amen? And they couldn't go anywhere. They were, they were totally stuck. Like I said, they couldn't go north or south either. They had to go straight through the water, and there were no boats. So God had to do something. God's the one that told him to leave. He doesn't take you from there. He doesn't, take you, he doesn't save you from the river to drown you in the ocean. He's going to take you through. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. But maybe today you're facing that Red Sea moment. Remember that God specializes in making ways, in creating ways, avenues, where there seems to be no way. Whether it's escaping a situation that enslaves you, or moving towards a promised future. Amen? Amen? I say this, trust in God's deliverance. Amen? Amen. Come on. Uh, number three, breaking through opposition. This is a great picture. David at Baal Perazim, 2 Samuel 5, 20. We've, we've spoken on this uh, often. But... Uh, David is the one who actually named, the, named this place, Baal, Baal Perazim, and David defeated the enemies there, and he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he, called the na he named that place Baal Perazim. And what, what I love about this is that 
Baal was, was the, the name for God in uh, the Philistines. So he, he, used, he used their God, he, he wasn't using their God, but that's when they said the name God, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but God is not his name. You, you realize that? Like our, we say God, G-O-D, that's not his name. He has a name. And, uh, but that's why we, I, I like to say Father. He's my Father in heaven. Why? That's what Jesus said. Jesus called him my, our, our Father, my Father, Father. He's always talking to Father. God is just the title. That's his title. And he's the big G, amen? But, but he, to throw it in the face of his, of his enemies, he's like, we're going to name this place God of the Breakthrough. But he used Baal as the name for God. The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. This significant name represents a military and a spiritual breakout. So maybe today, again, you're facing overwhelming opposition. Remember that David's breakthrough. How do you do that? Well, engage in prayer and seek God's strategy for the battle that you're facing right now. You don't have to face it alone. You don't have to go into it blindly. You can rely on the power of Holy Spirit to give you wisdom to break out of that which you need. Amen? And I love it says, with him, you're set for a break, breakthrough that will feel like a flood of victory. Yeah, I want a flood of victory. Amen? Do you want a flood of victory today? Come on. Uh, number four, breaking out of barrenness. Hannah's prayer for a son. This is found in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 1, 19 and 20. This is, uh, it says, uh, Then they arose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came at their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. You see, Hannah was experiencing something that many uh, men and women have faced, couples have faced over the years, barrenness. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing. Uh, my wife and I experienced it ourselves, and um, it's heartbreaking, as many of you know. But this, this message would give me great encouragement when we were going through that time. Because I look in the scripture, and I see barrenness was even a curse. I was like, wait a minute, God, like, am I cursed? Like, what is that? I mean, I know I, I didn't do anything wrong. Maybe, I know it had to be Autumn. She did something wrong, right? You know, it was her fault. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just checking myself. I'm like, and I think the Lord's like, mm, you might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yes. And so, <laughs> but I was like, God, what is it? In fact, I got to the point, I was so desperate. I got to the point, I just said, God, don't do it for me. Do it for my wife. Do it for her. And that's when we got a breakthrough. Because <laughs> God's so awesome. But Hannah was, was one of the stories that got to my heart when, I, I, when you read earlier, when she goes and she said, it says that she's praying so earnestly, so intently that the, that the high priest comes and says, woman, you've been drinking. It is. It's the same thing that they said on the, on the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in other languages that they didn't know. They were just speaking in other earthly languages and like praising God and, give, and prophesying. And people said, look at these people. They're drunk. Peter had to stand up. So these people are not drunk as you suppose. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And power. Amen. And, and so Hannah's there praying and, 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 and he's just like, what is going on with you? But something happened there. Something turned. And that's where we pick, that's where this picks up. It picks up as soon as this happened. She received her child. And the amazing, another amazing thing about that story is she gives him to the Lord. She turns right around and gives, what a picture of giving and thankfulness. Amen. After years of barrenness and heartfelt prayer, Hannah conceives and gives birth to Samuel. This personal victory represents a spiritual and a family breakout from the pain of unfulfilled desire. 
if you're wanting and you're waiting on God for a breakthrough in any area of barrenness, it's, it's, to me, it's more than just a child. Amen? Amen? It's more than just a child. This personal victory represents physical, emotional, and spiritual barrenness. Maybe you feel that way. You, you feel like you're not bearing any fruit. It's, it's, it's a hard thing because I don't know if you've ever um, grew up. I grew up around crops. And it, it was just a matter of faith that you would put seed into the ground and expect the crops to come up. That's why a lot, some of my family, they got out of that because they were tired of that. Because, you know, it didn't always rain. It didn't always get enough sun. I mean, you're, you're, you're really waiting. You really are throwing, putting yourself out there. But, I, but I, I think we have the same issues with other things in our lives. You put yourself out there. Amen? But maybe you have barrenness today. Not just you don't have a child. Maybe there are things in your life that you, there's fruit that you haven't been able to, to bring forth. You've been laboring at something and nothing happens. I mean, we put everything into having a child. Tens of thousands of dollars. And then the heartbreak when it doesn't work. Maybe there's other places in your life today that you have barrenness. I'm here today to tell you, continue to pour out your heart to God. Why? Because he hears and he answers. Come on, let's move on. Five, breaking out of imprisonment. Peter's angelic escape. It's a great story. Acts chapter 12, verse 10. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. <clears throat> then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. So he did, and he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and, he, and did not know that what was done by an angel was real but thought he was seeing a vision. See, I love Peter. <laughs> He's just like me. <laughs> I could be up and going, and I'm still not awake. Yeah. Uh, when, they were, when, when they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. What a crazy story. Jesus. You know, Peter is in jail because he's preaching the gospel. Amen? And we see this miraculous breaking out of prison by an angel of the Lord. He, they saw the first automatic door. <laughs> How crazy that must have been. They, these guys they had, they had never known anything about electricity or anything automatic. So to see that happen, the chains falling off, all these things, it shows the miracle. The angel of the Lord frees Peter from prison leading him past the guards, the iron gate. This miraculous escape symbolizes a divine breakout from a humanly insurmountable confinement. Feeling trapped by circumstances, fear, or the opinions of others. Peter's miraculous jailbreak reminds us that God's power to liberate knows no bounds. You can do it today. You can pray for freedom and expect chains to fall off. You have allowed yourself to be put into a prison, sometimes through your circumstances, your choices, but sometimes not by your choice. You're put in that place. I'm here to tell you today that there's a breakout coming for you, a supernatural one, amen? One that's so crazy, they gotta hit you to wake you up, and you're still not awake. <laughs> put your clothes on, put your shoes on. What? You know, just walking around like, this is a dream, man. I'm dreaming. Woohoo! Hope I get to fly next. Woo! <laughs> That's just how I think it would be. <laughs> He's here for you today. Six, breaking out of death. Lazarus raised from the dead, John chapter 11. We see where. Jesus raised his friend from the dead. His friend had been sick. They sent word, Jesus, come and pray for Lazarus. Your friend, you know, they always have to tag that on there. You know, your friend. 
and Jesus doesn't go until he dies. And then it takes Jesus four days to get to his friend's house. And, of course, he gets there and his family, oh, Jesus, if you had been here, you would have you uh, you healed him. And Jesus is like, hey, you know, let's see what happens. Uh, it says, now, when he had said these things, uh, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Breaking out of death. That's what this day, this whole day is about. Breaking out of death. But before that one happened, this one happened. Four days behind the stone. You know, Jesus, he comes in. He tells them just before this, roll the stone away. Before he calls his name. Now, I love, I've heard different people say, he said Lazarus because if he would have just said, come forth, the whole, the whole graveyard would have came out. It would have come out of the grave. Lazarus, come forth. Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb by his name, bringing him back to life four days after his death. This is a powerful miracle that illustrates a breakout from the finality of death to life. And it emphasizes us to us today, afresh and anew, that Jesus has the authority over death, hell, and the grave. That even when it's over, it's not over. So perhaps you're facing a situation that seems... It's completely dead. Maybe you have a dream that has died. It's just like you, you, you dug a hole and buried that thing because you said this is over. It's never going to happen. It's beyond hope. The story of Lazarus teaches us that it's never too late for a miracle. It's never too late for a miracle. Jesus, into your situation, invite him there right now. Invite him into your situation. Watch him bring life to what was dead. Now, we talk about that. That's actually what we're supposed to do. We're actually supposed to, Jesus said to the disciples, preach the gospel of the kingdom. It's not really hard to figure out. We don't have to take uh, years of theology to know what Jesus said about this. He said, preach the good news of the kingdom. Blind eyes open, deaf ears unlocked, demons cast out, yes, right? Lepers cleansed. And the dead raised back to life. Yes, amen. amen. I have met a handful of people in my life that are, they have resurrected people from the dead. When I was a kid, there was a man who came to our church. His name was Justice Duplessis. And he was an old man at the time. His brother was a very famous uh, minister. His name was David Duplessis. They called him Mr. Pentecost. He led Pope John Paul II into the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the Vatican. He was an Assembly of God minister in South Africa that God used mightily. Well, this, his brother was just as awesome as he was. He was a really, he was, he was a sought after person to talk about church government and how to, how to handle things in the church. And as a kid, I heard him preach and he was sitting there by himself. Everybody was leaving the church and I saw him and I went over and he just said something while he was preaching a little and he just kind of went on. He talked about seeing people raised from the dead. And as a kid, I was like, what? Because I'd seen dead people. <laughs> I've been to a funeral. I've been up there and, and touched, you know, Aunt Gertie's hand just to see how that is. What is that? I did it. I did it. Don't look at me like that. You tried it once, too. You, did, you never did? Okay. I'm, I'm different. But I, I was curious. I was curious. And, I, you know, when my dad's there, now she's not there. She's in heaven. I was like, okay. That's cool. So I saw the shell. I realized as a kid, that's just a shell. That's just like an earth suit, a tent. That's what Paul calls it. She's not there. She's in heaven. Amen? But uh, I went and talked to him. I said, he says, oh, I've, he just like matter of fact, says, oh, I've seen seven people raised from the dead. And one was four days. This person in Africa was dead for four days. And they didn't embalm them. That's crazy. I've had an opportunity. I just heard a, 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 a pastor this week, Brian Gibson. He's got a church in Amarillo. He's a, he speaks at a lot of our king's churches. 
And uh, he said, some, they had a guy died in their balcony uh, in September or October. They had somebody die in September in their church and they raised him from the dead. The person's still alive. But this person, then, within a month, another person's in their church, they died. I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to go to that church. <laughs> People <laughs> dropping like flies over there. It's like, <laughs> he, he joked that. He goes, before that time, he says, I was 0 for 3 praying for people to be raised from the dead. 0 for 3. It's like some of us are not nothing because we never even tried it. At least he, was, he says, I was 0 for 3. Then he was 2 for 4 or 1 for 4. And then October, guy drops dead. They do, they're doing all the stuff on him. One of their guys in the church is doing the compression. He said, I could hear his bones breaking. It was an elderly man. Pop, pop, pop. And the guy, they called the guy the Viking, the guy that was doing the compression. And he said, I just heard him popping. The guy breathes back in, and he was dead for many, many, like 10, 15 minutes. Breathes back in, he's totally alive. They take him in and check him, no broken bones, nothing. And this is what he said. He said, now every Sunday, that dude has 20 to 30 people with him. He had to rent a bus to bring people to church. That's a good advertisement, right? I was dead, and now I'm alive. Ha, ha. Come to church. They'll raise you back to life if you die there. You got somebody old? Bring them on down to our church. If they die there, you're in good hands. Hallelujah. <laughs> but that's what we're supposed to do. Bring dead things back to life. Most of the time, it's our dreams. Most of the time, it's our situations, our relationships. There are some of you that have relationships that you have buried that relationship dead and gone. And some of them are your family. And you know that you're supposed to be, there's supposed to be some type of reconciliation. Not saying it has to be like the way, the way it was before, but there needs to be some type of reconciliation. Amen? That's for somebody today. God wants you to do that today. Amen? The last one, breaking through the veil. It's a great breakthrough story. Matthew 27. When Jesus was crucified, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. The Bible also goes on to say that there were dead saints that came back to life and were, were seen walking the streets. What? It was like the zombie apocalypse had happened. Except they were really alive and they weren't trying to eat you. They were there. This is what happened. But listen, this veil was put in the temple to separate God from man, to separate his presence from us. The sad thing about this time in history, there wasn't even anything in there. It was designed to have the Ark of the Covenant, which was a sign of God's presence. But because of Israel's disobedience, they lost that Ark. It was lost, but yet that veil was still there as a reminder of God saying, we're not together. We, there is a separation. But when Jesus died on the cross, that, that was broken. It was torn in two. And this was, a, this was a heavy piece of material, thick. And it was ripped from top to bottom. You know, there's a reason why a lot of those teachers of the law in those days, many of them came in eventually and followed Jesus. Because they had always remembered that night that Jesus was crucified. When that happened, that could have been the one thing is, you know, the rabbis and the teachers that were there, as soon as they heard about that, they had to know. Just like the, the Roman centurion, he wasn't even in the temple, but he saw something happening and he says, surely this was the son of God. Because it was a crazy moment. Earthquakes. Some scholars believe that it was an entire around the around the, the earth earthquake that it was marked in other cultures that there was an earthquake on that day. Amazing. Amen? That was a time breaking through. Breaking through to what? To salvation. God, is, he left that for us as a sign that says, there is a way for you to come into my presence. You and I can be together again. And it's all because of Jesus. It's nothing about how good you are, how smart you are, what family you were born into. None of that stuff that matters. Or did you come to Jesus? You feel distant from God. The tearing of the veil at Jesus' death 
symbolizes our direct access to him. That even today we can approach him in confidence and prayer, knowing that nothing, nothing can separate you from his love and his presence when you come to him with a willing heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. How do you break out? One, these are just, I can come up with 50 ways. Have faith in God. Have faith in God today. God is the God that you can have faith in. He's been faithful all these years. Everything that he has said has happened. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? Everything that he said up to this time in history has happened. Two, learn how to praise him. This is so important. Not because I've been a worship leader most of my life. It's important because it's the scripture. It's important because it's the Bible, amen? It's, we see the pattern over and over again. <clears throat> Paul and Silas in the prison is a good one. Acts chapter 16. They were put in prison, and at midnight, they were been beaten, the Bible says, with rods. When that, when, when they, when that, whenever you hear someone was beaten with rods, in this culture, they specifically put them in, put their feet in shackles and beat their feet with rods. They would do it until the, the bones in the feet were completely obliterated and smashed. Then they took them and put these guys in the bottom of the prison, again with all of their hands shackled, and, this, and it specifically says their feet, which would have been swollen and broken and bloody, horrible. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. You see, this is, a one of, this is another moment of time when we can understand that it's not just about you. We, we say this at times about sin, like, oh, I can do that sin. It, it doesn't affect anybody else. That's a lie. It's a lie. It always affects. Even if we do something in secret, it is always going to affect somebody else. Always. But I got good news. There's other things that you do that will affect other people. When you choose to praise, to have faith in God and who he is, and you choose to praise him even when your feet are broken and bloody, even when everything in your life is destroying and, and burning up around you, if you have faith in God and you praise him, the other prisoners will listen. And guess what? Their chains can fall off too. Listen, their chains. You have family members. You have friends around you. If you will totally submit and surrender to God, your faith will affect them. Your faith and your praise to God, because they know all the stuff you go through too. But when you choose to praise God during all the stuff you're going through, you will see them set free as well. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm closing up. When faced with injustice or persecution, remember the power of worship and prayer. Your praise can lead to an earthquake-sized breakthrough, not just for you, but for all those witnessing your faith. And then I say this, serve others. Serve others. Amen? This is how you see a breakthrough. We've seen it over and over again. You know, we had Pastor Daniel rise here with the prison ministry talks about that, serve others. He had his own struggles, and he found that when he was, the more he served the Lord and helping in the church and ministering to others, the more that God helped him. Amen? There's something about getting, getting your, your energies, thoughts off of yourself and helping others. Yes. It, it, it helps. Amen? Amen? And then number four, don't give up. Come on, somebody. Somebody's here right now. And you want to give up. I, I, talked to, I talked to somebody today who wanted to give up. Talked to them on the phone. They're in the hospital right now because they wanted to give up. Wanted to end it all. Praise the Lord. They got help. Don't give up. I don't care what you're facing. Don't give up. You, you've heard me tell the story maybe about the family that found land. They said, there's, there's gold there. There's a vein of gold around this area. Just keep doing it. The guy goes, he works, he works, he works. 
He spends everything he has digging and, 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 and trying to get the gold in that property to the point of he loses everything. Doesn't want to, he gets, he gets afraid. Uh, Sunday morning comes, the family doesn't come to church that morning. And so the townspeople and the church people go out to the house and they find them all dead inside the house. He had murdered his own family and taken his life. He gave up. Sadly, someone purchased that property and went to the spot he was digging and within less than a day's work, found the gold. Isn't that crazy? That's a true story. That really happened. People died because one person gave up. One person gave up and it affected everybody. The whole town. Everybody. Don't give up. You're just right at the edge of what you, of what you need to experience. I have a video to show you, but it's, it's, it, we got to go. We got to move. It's Easter Sunday. Come on. But the video I have was from the movie from in the 1980s called The Right Stuff. And as a kid, I read the story of Chuck Yeager. And then I eventually saw the movie when I got a little older. Um, but he broke the sound barrier. He was the first person to ever do that in the X1. And they thought you would die. And the movie shows this very clearly. But he's flying in that X-1. It's literally a rocket with a seat on it. He's flying through the air at an unbelievable amount of speed on this rocket. And it, the, it's getting faster and faster and faster. Above him is getting darker and darker and darker because he's getting on the edge of space. And every instrument he has explodes. And it's, it's just shaking violently. Even in the movie, they like do the special effect where they, it looks like they, they just took the film and just like went like this with it. It actually kind of makes you kind of like woozy. And he's just about to, everything's about to fall apart, and boom, he breaks the sonic. He does the sonic boom. Everybody on the ground thinks he's exploded because the people have died doing this. They like kind of look away like, yeah, well, there goes another one, another one dead, until they, someone looks and they see it flying. He he gets to that spot, and as soon as he hits that breakthrough and he gets through that, that area, it's just smooth. And from that day to this day, I mean, you, you look at, we were outside last week when they had the, 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 uh, the show. Yeah, you know, the show, the thing, the kind, yeah, you know, the thing. And I was like, wow, we were over here. Saw those things flying by. And they just do it every day now. They do it every day. Nothing big. But in that moment, everything was falling apart. And I tell you today that just before your breakthrough, it feels like it's all coming apart. That You know what they always say? It's always darkest before the dawn. It's true. Get up tomorrow morning and look. And in Arizona, it's always the coldest, <laughs> right? It's always the coldest before the dawn. Then we start to bake. What are you facing right now? Let's stand. What are you facing right now that you need God to break through? And I, we're going to have to re respond quickly today. If you, if you say, man, pastor, I need a breakout right now. I want you to come down here and uh, we're going to just pray with you and agree with you this morning for your breakthrough. Come on. And if, you, if, if you're okay, then stretch your hand out right now and begin to pray right now. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm standing in line too. Somebody's going to have to pray for me. <laughs> I can pray for myself. Come on, anybody else this morning? You can say, God, I'm in a place where I need a break out of your power. I need a break out of your spirit right now in my life. Come on, anybody else this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please stretch your hands out right now. If, you're, if you can pray, please pray. Come on. Somebody, somebody is in need of the power of the Holy Spirit. Dead things are coming back to life. 
Dead things are coming back to life right now in the name of Jesus. There's an awakening that's going to happen right now in the name of Jesus. There's going to be an outpouring of the power of God right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Come on, let's just pray. Let's pray.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He's alive. Amen. Oh, man. God is so good. Come on, just give him praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for breaking out. Continue to do it. Amen. This isn't just for today. This is for all of, this is for every day. Amen? God wants to break out in your life. Be looking for it. Expecting it. Amen? Expect the Lord to do something. Amen? What's the Lord going to do today? Well, as soon as your feet hit the floor, what is the Lord going to do today? Amen? And then you'll, when it happens, you'll go, that's what he did. Amen? We were talking about this the other day about Sometimes you get a prophetic word about something and you think about it and you're like, oh, that was really awesome. And then it happens and then you're like, oh, it happened. It's like you didn't even, you didn't make it happen because you weren't trying to or nothing. It's just, you, sometimes it's, it, it happened in a way that you didn't think it was. Amen. Like we were in a meeting one time and, and, a, and a guy told this lady, a child is coming to your home. And she's like already done with kids. She's like, oh, no, like, no we're done we're done and I was like hey man you never know you never know and you know what happened she had a son that was a prodigal son that was out and him and his girlfriend got pregnant and guess where they came to mom's house so a baby did come to the house it just wasn't in the way that they thought they, she's like no no but when the Lord speaks sometimes it doesn't make any sense at all but it does to him and sometimes it's after the fact we're like Oh, that's what he was talking about. Oh, crazy. Amen? God's going to do it. Be looking for it. Amen? It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Lift your hands to the Lord this morning. I thank you, Jesus. I want to make sure everybody in this place is, has chosen to follow Jesus. If, if you have not done that, or maybe you've fallen away from him, would you... This isn't a, a magic prayer or anything. It's just, I'm just going to lead in prayer, and you can, you can pray after me these words from the, from the Scripture. Amen? The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and that he was raised by God on the third day, and you confess that with your mouth, you will be born again. Let's just do it right now. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is your Son. He died for my sins and was raised on the third day. 
I confess Jesus as my Lord today. Come into my life. Make it new. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Leave, it, leave, leave your hands up. I want to bless you today. Now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. And may you bear the name of Jesus everywhere that you go. That you would be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender, not the borrower. That you would be the first and not the last. And everything that you set your hand to will be blessed and will prosper. Things that you thought were dead are coming back to life. Relationships that you thought were dead, you're going to get a phone call. You're going to get an email. You're going to get a text. And it's not going to be a mistake. It's not going to be a mistake. Behold, the Lord is moving in your life. Bless your people today as they leave this place. Be with them, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Make sure you get you a picture on your way out. And we do have some specialty coffee today. Might want to partake of that goodness. Uh.